I'm Jennifer Poindexter, the Director of Promotion Education Programs at Missouri Farm Bureau. Today we're joined with Gavin Spore, a popcorn farmer from Martinsburg, Missouri. Gavin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So today we're going to talk a little bit about popcorn harvest and where it goes from the farm and how it gets to our bowls and our plates and movie theaters. Um, so can you kind of just explain a little bit about that process, the growing season maybe, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll kind of just go from there. Yeah. So. We're standing here in the corner of a yellow popcorn field. We planted it in mid-May. It's been growing all season, just like regular corn you'd see. It's pretty hard to distinguish it from regular corn during the growing season, uh, but the kernels are different come harvest time. So we've started harvest today, and we're going to combine this field, put it in a grain truck, put it in a grain bin, and it will stay there until January. So come January, we will send it to a cleaning facility in Kansas. They'll clean it and bag it in 50 pound bags, and from there we'll ship it out to kettle corn companies, movie theaters, and grocery stores across the country. So when you say clean, what do you clean it with? So it's a, uh, a grain cleaner, which was a lot more common 100 years ago than today, but uh, it's basically a, a huge machine with a bunch of screens with little holes in it. So the popcorn falls through, but the weed seeds get blown off, the, the chaff and the pieces of corn stalk that are still in there, mm -hmm. they get blown off. So the final product is completely clean popcorn. Uh, there will be no bugs. There will be nothing in that bag that's not popcorn. Do you fight bugs? Is, is insects a problem for popcorn? I haven't had huge issues with insects, but we take precautionary measures. Um, so we treat our grain bins with diatomaceous earth. Um, we try to keep our warehouse cool to keep insect activity down. We, we take every step we can to stop an insect from showing up in the first place. Awesome. So when you, you say you, it gets packaged, um, what kind of work did it take to get a food label on your popcorn? So when I was in college, uh, I started growing popcorn and I was just sitting in a recliner one day and I started Googling how to get nutrition facts on a product, where to get barcodes because you can't sell a product in a right. grocery store without a barcode. So I just played on my laptop in between classes and then I started making phone calls, sending email, emails, uh, networking with other popcorn companies, other food companies about how they got a small farm grown product into a grocery store and uh, it's been a lot of trial and error um, but i've got a system down that works pretty well now what is your system so i get my barcodes printed uh from a mom and pop company i believe it's in ohio and they send them to me i've got my um plastic packaging i put all of that on there and then i put two pounds of popcorn in a plastic bag and then we heat seal it so people can't tamper with it or get into it yeah. because when that product gets delivered to a customer i want them to know no one else has touched that except me and the farm it was grown on that's wonderful. Um, so what did it take as far as how did you get into those markets, into the grocery stores, into movie theaters? What kind of um, relationships did you have to build with, with those people? So the first grocery store I ever got into, I walked in and the cashier was there and I said, hey, I need to talk to your manager. And she kind of freaked out and thought, oh no, I did something wrong. Uh, but I said, no, I've got a product that I want to sell in your store. I need to know what I need to do to get it in. Right. Uh, so I went and introduced myself to the manager. I shook his hand. I told him about my product. And he said, that's great. I'd love to. But you don't have barcodes and you don't have nutrition facts. I said, okay. So then I, I went to the table and I started Googling all of that stuff. Uh, I came back at harvest and I had that package ready to go, the popcorn ready to eat. And he said, let's put it on a shelf. So then he started selling it and then he started selling a little bit more. Uh, I advertised on Facebook. I said, go get some and uh, just started cold calling more grocery stores, walking in to, uh, to movie theaters, anywhere that I thought would want to sell my popcorn. I just went and visited them. Did you start local first? Is that how you yes. started in your hometown? Yep. Uh, here in my hometown. The, the, I went to the grocery store in order to figure out what I needed on my label. But the first place that actually ever sold it was my uh, local farmer's elevator, the grain buyers uh, in Martinsburg Farmer's Elevator. That was the first display I put up with my mason jars uh, to sell. That's the first place I ever sold a product at. How many years has it took to build your business? This is my third popcorn crop. So this popcorn crop won't start getting sold until January. Mm -hmm. um, I'm selling last year's harvest right now. Uh, but yeah, this is my third crop. So going on three years. How much work goes into um, advertising and marketing to consumers so that they know that they're getting a healthy product? Every chance I get, uh, I'm posting on social media trying to educate the consumer that wants to be educated. If, if someone's not interested in popcorn, I, I, don't, I don't need to talk to them. But for someone that wants to know where their food's coming from, I want to be the voice to them to tell them how it's growing. So I'm always posting on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok 
uh, just talking about. I basically wake up and I start thinking about popcorn and I do it until I go to bed. What is your most popular social media platform? My favorite is Instagram, but my most popular would probably be TikTok. There's 50,000 people on there that follow along with every, uh, basically once a week I go make a video in the popcorn field about what's happening, what growth stage it's at, uh, and people tag along with it. How many followers do you have on TikTok? Uh, right at 50,000, I believe. Oh my goodness, that's a T lot of followers. Going, we're, we're pretty close to a million likes on all the videos, so. That's really popular. Yeah, yeah. So on some popcorn packages, there's a non-GMO label. Um, can you explain why that is? And does yours have a non-GMO label? So um, some products are genetically modified. They've had traits inserted into them to make them more resistant to disease or pest or whatnot. Right. But there's no such thing as GMO popcorn. Um, it's never been tampered with. It's just been old school bread uh, for the certain traits that you want to show in it. Uh, so no popcorn on the markets. Uh, GMO and so my popcorn I don't have a non GMO label but I say all of the popcorn is non GMO so people can understand that but what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of growing popcorn compared to sweet corn or Indian corn or field corn right so um, popcorn the sales are all on me if I don't get the popcorn sold it's not gonna get sold where field corn you can take it to any ethanol plant or local elevator and they will accept it um, compared to sweet corn Popcorn has a lot longer shelf life, so sweet corn, you've got to pick it and it, you've got to eat it within a week, it, you know, at least. Um, popcorn, you can put it in a package and it will last up to two years. Some people go longer. I prefer to sell everything within the, the next harvest. So I did it because I was a college student with not a lot of extra time to sell sweet corn, uh, but popcorn I could put in a bag and it would last a while. Great. And so why can you kind of take us through like a, a science lesson of why does field corn or sweet corn not pop, but popcorn does when you put it over heat or in a microwave? Right, so popcorn is the only kind of popcorn that does pop. Um, it has to do with how thick the kernel is, and I believe it's the starch content. One of the ingredients in the popcorn kernel, there's way more of it than regular field corn. Um, I believe it's the density of the starch content that makes it explode. Whenever it heats up, that water and the, the kernel of the popcorn, the whole, holds that moisture in because it's so thick mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden that water's so hot it has nowhere to go so it explodes and blows it inside out um, is how the popcorn pops so so if you scratch that kernel during harvest and that air and water can escape it will never pop you have to be very gentle with it when you harvest that's an interesting fact how much popcorn do you think you eat every year <laughs> I stopped <laughs> counting I eat a lot but at least probably every day I'm eating at least one bowl and so one last question is, um, how do you think they figured out that popcorn pops? I want to know that also. Um, it's been popping for a long time. They found it in caves, I believe, down towards Mexico, you know, in the southwest yeah. corner where, where corn originated. Uh, it's in, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, the, their old fire pits. They found remnants of popcorn kernels. So it's so. been a long time. So yeah. who knows how they figured yeah. it out. Yep. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Thank you.